Hey everybody, happy Friday. Welcome back. My name is Garrett Hartle. This is Reach Out Reptiles. I want to give you an exclusive look on the other side of the fence as to the perspective that we reptile breeders have of you, the customer, and how you can use that information to gain the influence of some of the most respected people in the industry. Let's check it out. Now, a guy by the name of Joseph Wong says that influence is our inner ability to lift people up to our perspectives. I will never hesitate to do business with that guy again, and I'm gonna do everything that I can within my power to make them happy. This is the kind of thought that you would want your reptile breeders to have about you. I mean, if, if you can get them thinking these things about you and stand out amongst other customers, then they're gonna give you the best prices. They're gonna be the most lenient in helping you get the best animals. And they're gonna wanna give you the absolute best of what they have because they wanna share with you, the customers that they love, what they're most proud of and what they're working on. This is the thought you want influential breeders to have running through their minds when your name comes up in conversation. And really, it's the thought that we as breeders want you to be having about us. So how do we accomplish that? I think it's about being different and setting yourself apart, which is pretty easy to do, thankfully, in today's world filled with so much negativity. If you can come in with a different perspective than everybody else and treat people with some simple respect that seems to have been lost in today's society, you've got it made. And it all starts with practice, the kind of people that you hang out with on a day-to-day -day basis. Remember, you can't hang out with negative people and have a positive life. It just doesn't work. Okay, so let's check out tip number one. You want to have a mentality of what you can give rather than what you can get. Okay, no matter where you're spending your time, you want to promote what you love rather than bash what you hate. That's going to bring a positivity to every interaction that you have with the breeders that you're reaching out to. And it's going to be something that sticks with them and, it, it, and they'll remember that. That'll last. So you want to think, okay, here's a breeder who I really respect what they're doing. How can I reward them? with interaction, maybe financially, buying product or something like that, or uh, just by giving them a little bit of encouragement to keep on doing what they're doing because of all the negativity that is out there. You can be the force that counteracts that in their life. And I guarantee that every interaction you have with them where you bring a little bit more positivity to them is gonna attract them to want to spend more time with you. And you can't have an influence on people if you aren't interacting with them, right? Right. Okay, tip number two, if you wanna be a good customer and have them remember you, don't overpromise. You've gotta be able to play the long game, okay? It's not about, hey, I wonder if I can save 50 bucks on buying this one snake right now. You wanna come into every interaction with what it is that you want from them and what it is that you're able and willing to give to them for that so that the, every transaction ends up being a win-win situation. You don't want to win over a breeder by grinding them down. And certainly, I know a lot of you are very untrusting with your money because you've met people who are very salesy in their approach and they try to take, every, take you for everything that they're worth, grinding you down to lift themselves up. What you want to do is just have a very realistic expectation of yourself that you can bring with honesty and authenticity to the table when you have these kinds of interactions. Okay, now that thought's going to bring us right over to tip number three, which is take action immediately. Once you've promised or said you're going to do something, do it right away. If you're at a reptile show and you've told them, I do want that animal, I would like to buy that animal, there really isn't any reason for you to go walk around first and look at everything else. Make sure that by the time you're talking to them and having that interaction, you already know that that is the animal that you want. Or if you do have to leave for some reason, let's say simply go to an ATM to pull out a little more money, give them what you have as a deposit. Even leave them with your driver's license or something. That act of trust, by making yourself vulnerable on your part, 
in leaving a non-refundable deposit or handing them something like a driver's license and collateral, which by the way, I wouldn't even accept. But the gesture alone is enough to build trust in that relationship. Now part of this is realizing what it is you're actually able to afford. I mean, all of us want to have the next big thing, but we can't always realistically buy it right in that moment, and that's okay. I mean, a breeder in their perspective is not gonna fault you for wanting to buy an animal that's less expensive. But if they're a good breeder, they still care very much about that animal, and they wanna make sure that you can not only afford to buy the animal, but that you're gonna have the funds available to realistically care for that for its entire life. If you have something like a super dwarf reticulated python, I mean, sure, they're small. This girl is already two years old, and they don't take as much as, as say, a mainland reticulated python, but they're definitely going to cost a lot more in maintenance than something that you can easily just go buy a starter kit for at Petco. And let's say that you do have to do something like uh, stretch out paying over the course of a few weeks or a month or so. Just get them the deposit right away and then reach out to them. Keep them notified every step along the way. The next payment will come on this date for this amount. And remember, don't overpromise. Hit those dates. If you do that long enough, every single time you are on time, you're separating yourself from other customers, looking good in that breeder's eyes, and continuing to build trust, even if they're smaller payments. The thing is, the amount doesn't matter as much as the fact that you kept your word. Now here's tip number four. I think as a good customer, you recognize that the person who's providing you with an animal that they actually bred, they are the expert in that animal, right? And even if you think you know more than they do, every single one of us has something we can learn from someone else if we have the wisdom and we take the time to figure out what it is. I learned a lot from my seven-year-old daughter the other day when we were at the lake. So one thing you can do that's gonna show a lot of respect for the breeder you're working with is ask them for their tips and tricks or any advice they have on uh, whether it's a breeding project or particular care requirements for an animal and then really listen and test it out. If something they told you works for you, post it on social media, tag them in it and tell, them, tell the world how much they helped you do that. You're gonna not only help other people to be educated so that their animals have a better life, but you're also gonna bring a, just a little bit more positivity and gratefulness to that breeder, and they're gonna remember that as well. Now, if you are serious about playing the long-term game with a breeder, and you wanna show them that, that you're in it not just for one-time purchase or something like that, but that you really want a relationship with them so that you can influence them and be influenced by them, I think a really smart thing to do is ask them for updates. I mean, one of the biggest advantages to have a breeder be always thinking about you as a good customer is that when a unique opportunity comes up, let's say they've decided to release a, a holdback animal that's just a better quality than anything else that they produced that year, if they're smart, they're not going to just go post that online. They're gonna reach out to their favorite customer, especially one who made themselves available by saying, hey, if you ever have something unique or special, let me know. And they're gonna ask you if you want that first and give you first options on animals that you normally can't buy. By requesting updates from the breeder, it also keeps open a steady stream of information between you and them. You know, that kind of brings me to another thought. Let me give you one more bonus point. Never turn down an opportunity that's given to you by a breeder you respect to have an interaction with them. Remember, every positive interaction back and forth is gonna build your relationship, build your influence, and, and get you to a point where they're giving you awesome tips on free animals, or they're introducing you to people that you would never have the opportunity to be introduced to. They're taking you in back rooms for tours and really letting you become a part of their lives. Let me give you this opportunity right now. This will help you uh, practice tip number four, okay? Take a little time and then comment below with your number one best tip that I could be doing as a reptile breeder to improve the quality of my interactions with you guys. There's your invitation for an interaction with me. I promise I will read every single comment because I want you guys to have influence on my life as we continue to build each other up 
and just make this whole community a better and better place with every interaction we have. But hey guys, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit a like button, help me to have a greater influence on the world around us. And uh, I really hope you guys have a great weekend. All of us here do. Oh, look at that. Poo on the groin. So much for a positive influence.